Hey, it's Will doing a quick intro. So we recently moved to Tennessee from Florida. This is our first winter up here. And we also recently got our first full on winter electric bill. And uh, it was high. It was shockingly high. So um, I brainstormed and came up with a uh, completely new invention on how I was going to lower my electric bill. It's called a uh, heat exchanger. Started doing some research, and it turns out a whole bunch of other people have already done it. So I, I didn't invent anything. Um, but I created my own heat exchanger because I went online looking at them, and they were like $800 to buy one. Um, I put mine together for roughly 220 It was uh, 75 bucks for the steel. Um, it was... Uh, I paid a local muffler shop a hundred bucks to weld the two um, back pieces uh, together because that that had to be airtight and a really high quality weld um, because I didn't want to carbon monoxide poison my family to death and uh, also it's going to be subjugated to a lot of uh, heating and cooling um, so that if it's welded incorrectly, it would uh, it, it would be a break point there. So I spent the money, had somebody weld it for me. Um, I'm kind of a hack welder, but I welded the rest of it together. And special thanks to my neighbor Shane for um, cutting some of the steel for me. He's got a good machine for that. So I got some help from other people. But um, oh, and the fan, um, uh, the fan was like 15 bucks. So uh, that was the total for the cost. Um, and it came out pretty good, man. I'm, I'm kind of proud of it. But without further ado, here's the project as it proceeds. And I hope you watch the video to the end and see it in action. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to leave a, uh, a like and uh, subscribe if you dig what I'm putting out. I think we're right where we want to be. So we got the general U-shape welded together. And then I got my uh, flange for the end there. And the one, two feet that I have to weld on. And uh, at that point, I think we'll have a finished product. Well, close to it anyway. We got all the bits welded together. She's coming right along. I'll bring you back for the next stage. All right, we're doing a test fitting and she fits perfectly. So final stage up next. So here's the finished product installed. Uh, I just mounted the fan to that flat steel plate on the front. It's a three inch computer fan I got on Amazon for $15. Um, you could check the link below if you're uh, interested in exactly what model. That plugs directly into uh, 110. But you can see I still have to... Uh... While I was in here doing this project, I had a couple of cracked fire bricks. So I hammered them out, and uh, they're coming in today. So uh, just waiting for those fire bricks. I'll put them in there, and then we'll do a, uh, a test fire for the final video. But there's the, uh, the finished product. I should stop here and talk about the fan selection for a minute. Um, I originally had a uh, old fan off of a computer that we threw out. I kept the fan because I thought, you know, we might use it for something in the future. Um, I wired that thing up to work off 110, and um, it was just kind of anemic. wasn't putting out as much power as I wanted. So I did some research online, and I went with uh, the fan that's, uh, in the description below because, uh, first of all, it uses two watts of electricity, which is extremely low power. Um, it also um, puts out 43 cubic feet of air, um, which is like twice what the uh, computer fan that I was using put out. So it's definitely blowing a lot harder. And um, while the computer fan that I originally selected was quieter, this one is still in the um, quiet range. So, um, you know, I had to stick with a three inch fan because I went with three inch square pipe. 
um, but you can get uh, more powerful three inch fans but you start getting noisy and I wanted this thing to just be like a background you know like non-nuisance because it's right it's sitting right in the living room where we sit there and watch TV and I didn't want it to be a distraction so um, this is powerful enough that it's going to make a difference but not so powerful that you're going to hear it running so uh, it's, I think it's that sweet spot so that's the fan I made a fire and the heat exchangers turned on this is how we normally have our uh, our fireplace with this big steel grate in front of it to uh, protect our house and um, that kind of that kind of hides the heat exchanger too which is nice because we didn't want it to be a visual eyesore and uh, it's actually running right now not too loud it sounds about like a dishwasher I would say the volume level I know it's not going to translate well in the video but um, so low sound signature low videos I mean um, visual signature and that's what we're after um, you can see the extension cord running out the side there is really the only tell comes over here behind our wood pile but not bad so far. I'm, pr I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, honestly, only been running the thing for probably uh, 15, 20 minutes now. So the air is just starting to warm up. I'll check back in a little while. And, uh, you know, we get like a bed of coals going. It should be pumping out some really hot air by then. But we'll see. I'll get back to you. We got a nice, slow, smoldery fire going. It's about an hour after I turned off the camera turn it back on and um, I'm gonna have to shoot this video and wrap this thing up because I'm getting tired <laughs> but um, so far so good I took the screen down so you get a better look at the heat exchanger and what's going on here um, you can see the fan right over here is sucking the coal air in from the room the cool air from the room is going into that three inch pipe down behind and underneath uh, the, the grate where the hot coals are and then it, the air gets superheated and it comes back out this side and blows into the room. So far um, it has not affected the way my fireplace is drafting so all the smoke is still going out the chimney like it's supposed to. The um, heat exchanger itself is not uh, blowing any smoke into the room, so it's, it's intact. It's working as it should. The air coming out of the outlet side is, uh, it, at this point, it's hot. It's hot air. Um, not so hot that you would hurt yourself or I'm worried about damaging anything, but um, it's definitely working as, as designed. And then I touched the... Um, the pipe here on the inlet side and this is still surprisingly cool to the touch so um, the fan is fine it's not in danger of overheating or anything things working so yay will <laughs> um, and it is definitely contributing to the heat coming into this room so overall so far I would have to say uh, this experiment's been a success I guess maybe I'll check in on a future video and let you know if it's uh, helped out with the electric bill or, um, you know, how it's working out. Um, I can add this. I mean, I'm not like a heat exchanger expert, but I know that um, once you start these things up and you put a fire in it, you have to leave that fan running. Um, you can't have a fire in the fireplace without the fan running on the heat exchanger or else it will, the heat will back up to that uh, fan uh, through the pipe the steel will conduct the heat back to the fan and ruin the fan so that's one that's one thing to know about these heat exchangers they need to be running if you have a fire going um, but that's it that concludes the video uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, thanks for thanks for coming along on this adventure you never know what I'm gonna do next